Welcome back to another episode of Rebel Driver's Garage. I'm Scott, your host, Scott Liggett. And today, if you actually saw the title of this video, you know that we took my 1967 GMC Project Hay Hauler and we short bedded it. What does that mean? Well, it means that we took it from a long bed, standard eight foot bed, to a short bed, which is like six and a half feet. It's not really six feet, it's six and a half feet. And what that means is you're taking 20 inches out of the frame and 20 inches out of the bed. Um, there's, way, or, you, there's other ways to do it, but this, that's what we did. Now, this was the hardest video I've ever had to edit. Why? Because I lost a lot of the video footage. But I still wanted to show you how we did it and make it somewhat understandable so you could do it yourself, okay? That's, what, that's the whole point of all these videos, is to do these videos so you can do these things yourself, okay? So follow along. It's a little bit different type of video because I don't have a lot. There's stuff in there. I'll show you exactly what I did. But it's going to be a little bit different. And I'll make it as coherent and easy to follow as possible so you know what's, what's necessary to take a long bed to a short bed without so much, so, so much as having to buy everything. You know, we didn't buy a kit to short bed the frame or shorten the frame. You can buy those kits. They're like $400. They really kind of, you cut, they show you how to cut the frame and then they have plates that bolt on and you're supposed to drive down to some place and have it welded if you don't know how to weld yourself. We skipped that part and we just welded the frame ourselves. Follow along as you see what we did. Okay, well, okay, so here we are looking at from the, the, the beauty and the butt end, her cute little tushy. Anyway, um, as you can see, it's now, now, it's not an eight foot bed, it's like a six and a half foot bed. So you end up taking 20 inches out of it. So the first thing you got to do is you got to take 20 inches out of the, or uh, to take 20 inches out of the frame. Well, you start by taking eight inches right out of the frame rail, right here. You just saw the the uh, eight, last eight inches of your frame rail right off. Okay, that's simple. And now you got twelve inches more to take care of. Well, what you do is, well, hang on a sec. I'm crawling on my knees. You the section of the frame between the two body mounts. There's the front body mount and the rear cab mount right there. You, uh, you, you have to make a cut up here somewhere, okay? Hang on one second. Okay, I got some light back down here so we can see what we're doing here. So you, you take a cut. Somewhere between the two, you gotta get a foot out of your frame. Well, you can't do this. You don't want to cut where that's at because that's a lot of rivets to cut out, right? And you don't want to go up there or you might the transmission, so you got to go in between the two. So what we did is like right here in the middle, you can take 12 inches out. Now what you don't want to do is just cut a straight line to straight down. That's bad. And we'll weld it together. You could, but it's not really good for strength. So what my boss did is he cut like a line like this like that. It's 12 inches from here to here, excuse me. And we welded it to back together and then uh, that way you have a nice long frame. Nice long uh, weld that's not a straight down so to give it a lot of uh, longitudinal uh, strength as well as vertical strength. To add to it, just to be on the safe side, we also added that block of plate of uh, plate steel on each on the inside of the frame where the cut was made to give it some more added additional strength. Okay. So now 
we have the frame that is cut, and welded, and shortened, right? It's now 20 inches shorter, eight at the back and 12 in the middle, and the frame is still ugly, right? As you can see in the pictures, that it's still surface rust. I mean, it's not rusted through, it's not it needs to like patched or anything, but it's ugly. And I didn't want to put it on the car back, put the truck back on it like that. So I took it up to my friend's farm. He's got this big sandblaster, a two inch hose, 300 pound pot. And I went up there with a pallet of sand. And I spent two, uh, a weekend up there blasting away at the frame. Once the frame was all blasted, now I have to stop there for a second. I didn't take the suspension all apart and off the frame and take it down to a bare frame. That would have been a lot easier to sandblast. But it's a lot more work and everything on the suspension was only two years old and had about three or four thousand miles on it. So I didn't want to do that. So I left it all on there. But I spent a lot of time duct taping stuff I didn't want to get blasted. All right. So anything you don't want to, you don't want blasted with a sandblaster, you kind of protect it with like several layers of duct tape. And that's what I did. It was a couple of rolls worth of duct tape. And like brake line, the brake hoses, um, some of the uh, like the aluminum, uh, I have aluminum uh, classic performance products, uh, adjuster sleeves for the tie rods. I don't want to blow those apart with sandblaster. So I, I taped them up really good. Now we painted the, the entire chassis all at once, like I said, with the chassis all assembled with the suspension and brakes and all that on there. It was a challenge. My buddy and co-worker at work, Sean Towery, did the paint job and it took him all afternoon to paint the frame because he had to get in all the nooks and crannies and all the other stuff that's really difficult to do. And he did a fantastic job, as you can see here. All done is hot rod black by XL. Or kind of satin, that's the bottom of the hood. This is the radiator support, the entire chassis. And trailer hitch. And the transmission crossover. She looks good. All right, now we have a shortened frame. What do we do next? We have the shortened frame, it's powder coated, or not powder coated, but painted. I suppose you could have powder coated it, but I, I'm not a big fan of that. And I, I really just, because it was sandblasted so well, we just decided to paint it instead. Now it's all painted, it looks pretty, but we have no body on it. So the first thing is, as you can see in the previous video that we did on this, the cab was all finished, and that was the first things that we did when we put the car, the Takashi, back together, is put the cab on because everything else bolts around it. Now, on the when you're shortening, short bedding the frame, as you call it, shortening the frame for the short to make it a short bed, you have to move the rear cab mounts forward because you cut out 12 inches of the frame between the two cab mounts, and you have to move them forward. This is where a lot of measuring before you start cutting is necessary, okay? I didn't show that, but it is very, very necessary. You do a lot of messaging, not just forward and backward, but crisscross as well, to make sure when you re-put the new frame, the, move the cab mounts on the back forward, that they're in the right position and the cab will sit down on it correctly. Okay, now we have the cab on. Next was I put the front clip on. Now, this was some work. A, you think putting the original sheet metal back on a truck would be easy because it's not aftermarket stuff. It was already on there. You just put the shims back in the right place. But the right foot fender had been hit. And it was, it was rumpled a little bit. It still is rumpled a little bit and it was difficult to do because of that trying to get everything listed and let's face it GM didn't care about door gaps that were correct uh, fender gaps when they're correct it was a truck it was designed to be worked it wasn't a Cadillac 
It wasn't going to sit its life in the garage. Most of these at the time were either, in a, if they were lucky, they were in a barn or a shed on a farm or sitting outside as a work truck, and that's what they did. But I wanted to prove on that. So that's what I spent. I spent all afternoon working on the doors and fenders and all that to make it look a little nicer. All right, so now we got the cab on, the front clip on, and I wanted to make sure everything looked good. Now it came to the bed, the bed size, and the bed. What do we do here? Well, my original intention was to cut the bed floor down, cut out the section eight inches back here and 12 inches up here, but the problem was is that it had rust, like the typical of these metal bed floors, they rust back by the tailgate a little bit. There wasn't a lot, but it was gonna cut it was gonna be work to fix. Also, welding all the way across the floor in two different places and cutting it out was gonna take a lot of time. The third problem that I had was there was a lot of crusty rust happening between the bed floor and inside the, uh, the, the boxes that, that, that are the bed supports and what the bed sits on on the frame. They're like square boxes like this and there was rust inside of them happening and there's no way to sandblast that out. And I was gonna have to sandblast the frame, the, the bed, the entire bed floor when I was done. Also, the inner fender wells were beat up a bit and then the front of the bed, the front of the bed was starting to show some surface rust at the bottom and I was going to have to use an air hammer or a chisel to get the bolts loose because all the bolts were rusted and I broke all half of them and then you end up having to chisel them out because they are uh, carriage bolts. So there's no nut on the top and no nut on the bottom. There's just a nut on the bottom and a, and a round, and a, basically a half sphere on the top and and we had to chisel all the uh, air chisel all the bolts that hold the bed sides on to get the bed sides off the bed that is labor and when you're thinking about labor cost versus the cost of new parts it's you got to think about that when you're doing body work say like my fenders right they have some rust in the bottom um, I could have fixed the rust you could buy a patch uh, to fix, you could buy patches for it, but by, you know, the two patches are within $10 of buying the entire fender. A new fender from LMC was like $167. Unfortunately, they've been a back order like everybody else with body panels and everything else that has to do with automotive parts for a long, long time. So what do we do? I already had the bedsides off and I'm looking at this floor going, oh geez, I don't wanna do all that work. So I called up the LMC and I got a short bed floor and I got new front uh, panel, new inner fenders. Now the, in, now the floor was expensive. The floor is $1,025 and you know, the front piece was about $229 and then the inner fenders were cheap, about $100 bucks a piece. So that was like you look at the labor well a thousand dollars sounds like a lot of labor well if you're at sixty five dollars an hour a thousand dollars is two days of labor two days and if you think about it sandblasting cutting welding grinding down all those welds and we're talking about a floor that goes does this right um fixing the rust hole the rust the two rust holes and then all that labor, that's gonna be way more than two days. So, smart thing to do was to buy a new floor. Thankfully, they had one in stock. Unfortunately, they wanted $600 in truck freight to send it to <laughs> We live, I'm, um, I'm in Nebraska, and they're in about by Kansas City. It was a six hour drive, and it was $600 freight, so guess what? I jumped in the truck and we took a tra flatbed trailer and we went down there and got 
those pieces and a few a few other things too uh, that I've been ordering for the truck and you'll see in the future video so now what do we have left we had the bedsides now I was considering buying new bedsides from LMC they're $589 a piece at least that were last time I looked but the problem is they were out of stock and 67's are the only ones that don't have the uh, uh, they don't have any side marker lamps on. 67 is the only year of this body style that has two things that all 68s into 72s do have. They have side marker lamps and they have, most of them have the big back window. Though I believe, don't quote me on this, that the big small back window was available in 68 as an option. I don't know who we got it, but you'll have to, I, people can argue about that all day. So what did we do? We jumped in my truck and had a little fun road trip. Me and a buddy went down to Kansas City to get it. Uh, we're in Lincoln, Nebraska on our way to Lenexa, Kansas. Stopped at a truck gas stop. Really cool as I got these. It's an old Mack truck. Tanker. And I believe this is a white tow truck. A white or a diamond tea. I can't remember. I'm going to see here. Oh, look, we even got them sitting on cobblestone's road, on a cobblestone road. These things are so cool. Oh, yeah, look at that. That white tow truck is so cool. And here's a really old one. I don't even know what this is. Somebody could probably tell me what that hood ornament is. Seat cab, crank, hand crank engine before the starters. This thing is old, old, old. Imagine driving one. That's cool. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Five minutes of cutting later, this is what we get. Now we have the new bed floor. All right. So here's the new bed floor. Now it needs to be painted. You just don't take it out of the box and paint it. You want the paint stick. So we scuffed it. That's a lot of square footage to scuff. It took me three evenings after work to do it. And I had to do both the top and the bottom. And, uh, and it was quite, quite the challenge. So once I did all that, we had the, I painted the floor. We painted the, uh, the, the front panel and the new inner fenders. And then, um, and then we also painted the inside of the tailgate. Uh, we did sandblast the inside of the original tailgate and painted it. Or painted the inner fenders, tailgate, and uh, tailgate. Just we just sandblasted the inside of the tailgate and painted it. Um, it still has the patina on the outside. You can still see all the dings and dents in it from 50 years of use. The original bedsides, we sandblasted the inside of it after shortening them and painted them. There you go. Still got a couple of dings in it.
Half of this body is new paint. Half of this body side is new paint. And half of it is the original paint with the original patina. Can you tell where? Can you tell where the line ends and the new line begins? It's kind of difficult, isn't it? But it obviously, because we didn't cut the wheel well, the stuff on either side of the wheel well and up, this is all original. That's all the original paint. It's underneath the satin clear. And then all this is two stage over here. And then two stage back here with a little bit of black primer showing through, which was original to the truck. Uh, except on the driver's door, there's red primer. So uh, I'm not sure why there's red primer on the driver's door. 50 some odd year old truck. He probably got painted somewhere in some time uh, in the past and was used prime, uh, red primer back then. Everything is back together. The bed's on the truck. The chassis is all pretty. The cab is on the truck. The front end's on the truck. And now it's short bedded. All right, get an idea of what it looks like now. Fully painted and out in the sun. Time to take her home and get her put back together. Thanks for watching. I hope this is helpful. So if you have any questions, hit me up in the comments. If there's any kind of questions on how we did this, let me know. I'll answer. I answer most every question I come up on my comments. I appreciate it. If you like this channel, please subscribe. Hit the like button. Hit the notification bell. And uh, I hope you enjoy this. If you have any, like I said, if you have any questions, let me know. My name is Scott again. Thanks for watching.